Welcome to the Big Mike Fun Podcast, where you learn about advanced wealth building strategies from real estate investing to creating massive ROI and secure retirement profits. So pour yourself a cup of coffee, grab a notepad, and lean in. Because Big Mike has got the mic, starting now. Welcome to the Big Mike Fun Podcast. I'm the Big Mike. Mike Zlatnik. And today it is my pleasure and a privilege to welcome back my very good friend, Scott Myers. Hi, Scott. Hey, Mike. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm fantastic. Thanks. Thank you very much for coming on the podcast. You are the master blaster of the self-storage. If you remember the, the movie, it was the master blaster. It's, you are the, the resident expert. You are uh, the guru. So what's going on right now in early 2022 in self-storage? Yeah, well, I, I can speak uh, on the broader sense, but then also with regards to uh, our business itself, which we're, we're kind of following anyways. And that is, you know, we have a continuation of the, the boom in self-storage that is carried over really from 2020 as well as uh, 2021. So part of that is driven by interest rates. Uh, being uh, so low, the cost of capital is low, and the demand for storage being high, that uh, there is no shortage of interest in self-storage, and therefore no shortage of uh, transactions. So we've seen a, a, a rush to self-storage, as we always see during a, a recession, and the pandemic was really kind of, you know, it, it mimicked the same effects in the economy as a recession. You know, businesses uh, shut down immediately, people went home from school, people went home from work, and therefore created a demand for people to uh, have to clear out uh, the living room, the dining room, a bedroom to, to do work and to do school. And so all that extra stuff went into um, self-storage. And so during the pandemic, we saw a huge increase in demand for, for self-storage and couple that with the fact that we're an essential business. So we were never shut down uh, anywhere across the country. And we've been running with technology and kiosks and you can literally rent a unit by way of your mobile device um, almost anywhere in the country that has the technology set up for it or through a website. So, you know, we, we were touchless before it was cool to be touchless in our industry. And so we just, we absolutely never skipped a beat and uh, we, we did very well during uh, the pandemic. Well, now we're seeing uh, the in, uh, inflation has uh, crept into our account. Well, it hasn't even crept in, it just stormed in. And depending upon the, the figures that you look at, whether you agree with the 6% or 7% that is posted, I mean, you know, real, real inflation rates on, on all goods and, and the effects of the economy is you know, closer to double digits. And so for investors looking to get yield, you know, they're coming out of the stock market, they're looking at hard assets and income producing assets. And because self-storage has done better than all real estate asset classes in the past two years, then yeah, all eyeballs are on self-storage. And so sellers that were in a place or even owners that may not have been a seller, but sellers definitely are, are reaping the rewards of that. And just that the valuations are, are absolutely uh, crazy is just a, is not an over-exaggeration. You know, we're seeing um, properties, including some of our own trading it at a, anywhere from a zero to a 2% cap rate uh, because the demand is so high for not only the REITs, but the hedge funds and the new players that are coming in and snatching these things up uh, because they know that storage not only is done well, but it is the asset class that benefits the most from a recession. So there are these folks, these hedge funds, um, banks are, are love self-storage to keep on their balance sheet during a recession. Hedge funds are looking at all the same numbers that the banks are as well. And so if you're a seller in self-storage right now, which we are, um, times are good. By the same token, you know, money's cheap. We're locking in and, and we're so also we're raising capital in a fund and also syndications and we're buying value add facilities. And uh, we have development projects that are in the works as well. So you know, uh, I'd, I'd say that's a lot. And that's a mouthful in the in the time that we have, Mike. But you know, we've got um, we've got a good uh, a good handle on you know which area and sector of the the self storage landscape that we're putting the brakes or at least pumping the brakes and and where we're hitting the accelerator off full throttle. But it's uh it has been a wild ride, and uh, we absolutely uh, love where the economy's uh, heading and 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 really the you know the true gifts that we've been given in the in the self storage industry as a result of not only the pandemic but um, the oncoming recession and inflation. It's been good to us. So Scott, thank you for. There's a lot of information to dissect over there. That was just <laughs> awesome, and and I have to say that yeah, inflation is a massive friend for self storage. It's because you can mm -hmm. pass increases. It's a month to month friend. So inflation mm -hmm. is up. I think officially it's seven or seven and a half percent, but right. what, what did you see uh, last year in mm -hmm. rent increases, every trend increase per facility yeah. inflation versus what you actually <laughs> saw uh, uh, year over year? Uh, mm -hmm. Do you have the data point where approximately? 
I do. I do. So um, we have national rates that um, anybody can have access to by um, Yardi and then some of the other national larger data gathering uh, areas. And, you know, they're pegging a year over year rent growth. Uh, well, for banks, for underwriting, it used to be 3% rate increase and, and they bumped it up to four. Um, but what we're seeing in reality is um, somewhere between five and six nationally. But um, to be honest with you, Mike, at our facilities, depending upon the market and where we're at uh, now, we're, granted, we're buying value add facilities. And so some of these mom and pop owners are unsophisticated and they haven't raised rates um, for a number of years. But we've um, in, in some cases, we come into a facility, we raise the rates 20 percent and one facility all in one fell swoop because it was so far behind in the market. But all things being equal. You know, we were seeing uh, at our facilities, we we're pushing rates about seven to ten percent um, month over month for several months straight during the leasing season during the summer. But overall, during the year, probably in, in that in that range of ten to twelve percent across our portfolio, which are mostly B and C class uh, facilities. So it is, um, yeah, rates have uh, have been on a tear, which is also, as you put it, in self storage. Yeah, our, our leases are month to month, and so we we have the ability to. Now we don't. We don't go in and do that uh, every facility and every unit, um, seven to ten percent per month, or we would lose these folks. But we have been very, you know, extremely aggressive in, in our rate pushes this past year. Yeah, and that's great to hear. It's it, it is a very powerful um, asset class <clears throat> during the inflationary environment. Your ability to raise rents um, is just awesome. You don't have to evict. You don't have to deal with tenants. You don't have to fight. You either no. keep keep the the storage, or you don't. And if you if you like, mm -hmm. used to be a hundred bucks, now it's hundred and ten. Mm -hmm. um, the the uh, elasticity of the of demand is such mm -hmm. that people generally don't move their junk over if they nope. you know if you increase it, uh, the rent. But the other really uh, amazing thing in this industry, at least my observation, <laughs> my investments is that um, these deals are leveraged. So mm -hmm. seven to ten percent increase in the in the rent could could mean thirty percent growth in NOI. So what was mm -hmm. the NOI growth last year? I'm just curious if you have the data too. Um, and then one is we, we talk about the past and then let's, let's switch the whole mm -hmm. discussion to the future because mm -hmm. uh, you have something really important. You, you said that people are buying them and they're paying very low cap rates. Yeah. And it's a lot of risk. You would think about this. The past doesn't mm -hmm. necessarily guarantee the results. I was looking at the REIT, REIT index. And again, we were private operators, right? We're private investors. Mm -hmm. We're different from REITs. REIT index mm -hmm. in storage, I think, was the number one sector um, yes. in, in mm -hmm. real estate last year. Some crazy... Yeah. And it reads, mm -hmm. uh, prices of REITs, again, it's supply demand on the market. It's market forces. They're mm -hmm. bidding those shares up higher mm -hmm. than the NOI growth, which makes me a little mm -hmm. nervous uh, that people are over projecting the growth uh, of NOI in, in, in the self-storage sector. But maybe mm -hmm. I'm wrong. So what's what was the 2021 uh, NOI growth? And then what's the outlook for mm -hmm. uh, rent increase and NOI increase in 2022? I'm just curious. Because uh, mm -hmm. a lot of money is chasing storage, but uh, is it possible that it'll overheat and the NOIs won't grow as much because mm -hmm. all this pent up demand will think slow down? I'm just I'm just curious your thoughts. Yeah, well, obviously there's a lot of variables um, fixed into that. So you know, REIT, um, yes, REIT growth and the um, the REIT index showed self storage topping out at around 17 percent or so. So that is a very strong growth and outpacing all the other asset classes. Um, NOI, real NOI growth, closer to 12 percent. So there are some folks that are still bidding up shares, as you mentioned, you know, banking on the fact that it is going to continue to go up because it has gone up um, so quickly. So, and, and that's about what we experience at our facilities, um, you know, across the board, our portfolio up about 13 to 14% in a real NOI. Um, and I say there's lots of variables at play there because, you know, the, there's a rise and an increase in, in our expenses as well. Our, our, fortunately, our rate growth, um, you know, outpaced our, our expense growth by a very wide delta, but still insurance rates went up considerably. Uh, we had a lot of natural disasters that occurred in 2020 as well as uh, late 2021. Um, so the insurance has gone up uh, dramatically. In other instances, uh, utility costs uh, have gone up as well. Um, payroll has never been an issue in self-storage. It doesn't take um, much in terms of uh, payroll and wages to run a self-storage facility. So the good news is we weren't affected much there, like some of the other, not only real estate asset classes, but other businesses uh, in general. So uh, we fared pretty well. So in terms of um, you know the the industry about seventeen percent um, NOI growth um, you know or, or excuse me uh, the REIT index growth um, NOI growth right around twelve percent and 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 for our our own portfolio somewhere around thirteen to fourteen percent and uh, we expect to beat that this year. 
So that was the past year. In 2022, you actually think the momentum <clears throat> will continue and the inflation will continue to accelerate or your ability to raise um, prices uh, is faster <laughs> than the, the cost of obviously utilities and insurance mm -hmm. and everything else. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, well, we'll have to see how that shakes out in December, Rob, because, uh, you know, with a potential increase in interest rates coming up in, in, in March, as early as March, as they've uh, stated, and um, one that is slated for while well, they were predicting uh, even uh, or um, suggesting a 1% increase by July, you know, clearly, if we go up a whole point, um, or even a, a point now uh, in by July, a half now and a half later, you know, that's going to slow the market. Um, things uh, will begin to, you know, we'll, we'll start to see some you know, rates that will probably be frozen in terms of a uh, storage. Uh, the good news is that for the most part, um, you know, March and April is, is when uh, leasing is uh, very strong, but we have, uh, we, we still have high demand for self-storage and many, many facilities are full and have a waiting list. So um, there's always a lag in terms of uh, interest rate hikes and what that looks like in terms of the actual usage and our, our rental velocity, as well as the activity level in on the investment side as well. So even if cap rates right now, if you want to draw you know a line across the board and say for all A, B, and C classes um, that you know cap rate is averaging right around five and a half percent, you know, if we have a, a, a quarter, a, an eighth, a half a point increase in March and another in uh, July, I think it'll slow the activity, but typically the valuations, because we're seeing, you know, 16, 17, 20 offers on these, uh, especially the institutional grade assets right now that um, I, I don't think it's going to affect the valuations and, and, and cap rates for the near term. We may see a little bit of that in third and, and, and fourth quarter is when I think that'll settle in. And depending on whether we've had that third and, and final interest rate hike, you know, that's when I see, and again, I, you know, <laughs> my crystal ball's broken in the past 10 years um, with, uh, you know, the predictions that we've had in terms of, uh, you know, the, the market itself and valuations. But I, I, from what we're seeing right now, I would say that we're really not going to see a slowdown that's going to affect us in terms of velocity of uh, lease up or um, increases in, in uh, interest rates and therefore cap rates and a lower valuation and, until the fourth quarter. But I really don't see it affecting valuations much. I see more just a, a decrease in, in the overall activity level. Uh, the banks will start to pucker up a little bit. They're gonna, they need to retool and um, understand how to underwrite again. And they're not going to be as uh, apt to put money out there in the market because um, they are going to be waiting if we're getting going to be in a high inflationary environment and in terms of uh, interest rates going up. They're going to want to hold on to their money a little bit and see how far they can take it before the Fed increases again. Yeah, that's a, that's a great uh, commentary. Um, I, I happen to agree on the interest rates. Uh, the, the, the thesis that I, I've heard from some very large um, institutional real estate investors is that the short-term interest rate increases what the Fed controls uh, and the ability to uh, put some pressure on long-term rates through uh, the leveraging of their balance sheet, basically selling treasuries. They could manipulate um, the 10-year or treasury up uh, to whatever degree they feel they, they need to manipulate. Um, the, it's likely that the yield curve will flatten. So the short-term rates probably will go up at the whim of the Fed, but the long-term mm -hmm. rates may not go up at the same speed. Uh, mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. the other point you, you, you mentioned is supply demand of the money. Uh, the, um, the, the, the massive demand for the facilities can, could continue to support strong pricing, even if, if interest rates go up. And uh, I, 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 I know it's really interesting. The, one of the commentaries I heard that the cap rates may actually compress further, even if the interest rates uh, go up, which is almost counterintuitive. You would expect the cap rates to yeah. go up mm -hmm. with high mm -hmm. interest rates, but in the short term, uh, very similar theory. So mm -hmm. let's continue to kind of look <clears throat> forward. Uh, mm -hmm. In the short run, yes, there may be uh, supply, demand, equilibrium disbalance where uh, the demand will be so much outpacing the supply, the fresh money going into the, uh, mm -hmm. into the industry. Mm -hmm. What about a mm -hmm. couple of years out? Um, will the income growth support, uh, we, we don't know. I mean, now we, we're really in the realm of a crystal ball. If the inflation <laughs> continues, in theory, uh, mm -hmm. even overpayment today for these assets will be supported mm -hmm. by future NOI growth. Um, mm -hmm. do, do you have any kind of a thought process? Are you investing into new ground up projects um, mm -hmm. or looking for more value add where you're taking less risk? So what is, what is more attractive today? A value add incremental? Or a ground up, which you have to basically, it's a slow process. You have to build it. It takes quite a, you know, quite a long time. And then mm -hmm. uh, the cost of construction 
are going up. By the way, how are you dealing with it? Uh, yeah. The cost of construction is escalating at a rapid pace. Mm -hmm. So I'm just curious your mm -hmm. thoughts on what, what what are you projecting where the investments into multi-year horizon? Well, I, I think right now, if we can uh, buy a facility, an existing facility with historical financials, well, first of all, you already know uh, the budget of the asset itself, what it is. It's, it's the acquisition price. Same thing if you were to buy a facility that is at certificate of occupancy, you know that there's no more construction costs. And so that variable has been removed. The element of risk is uh, is the lease up. That is you know, the, the risk that's involved in that. If you're starting a ground up right now, then um, there's a lot of risk, um, not only uh, the, the lease up, but also an increase in, in construction costs during the project and, and overruns. Uh, overruns also in the terms of uh, delays, which also puts a, a, a heavy burden on a project as well. And so I, I do believe there's going to be, well, I don't believe, I know there's going to be a slowing. We've already seen a little bit of a slowing just on, on the threat of uh, increases in uh, interest rates and some of the challenges that we have in the supply chain right now. Um, there are, are several projects that were that were shelved, several that are just hit, hit the pause button uh, nationwide, uh, but still, and the number of uh, new starts and uh, permits that have been filed um, has also decreased from about you know, 500 down, uh, it's down about 200 to about 300. So maybe a 35, 40% um, decrease in, in the amount of uh, permits for new starts. Um, so good news is uh, for all those that are out there right now that that should help the velocity of uh, Lisa because again we still have a pent up demand, uh, but it doesn't take away uh, the the risk. You know, for us, you know, we we're making not a complete shift, but the you know the balance and the ratio. Uh, I mean, right now we're, we're selling everything that we can, uh, Mike. I don't think that's uh, we're not giving away any trade secrets right now. If you got a facility that is uh, you've created enough value in it that it's uh, darn close to, you know, it's a, it's lease up and your projected exit, then exit. And uh, we're, we're getting cash and uh, we are gathering our war chest of private equity investors to go out and then take advantage of some of the folks that got into the business that, you know, they didn't project well for a, a lease up or a, the high cost of uh, an, an increase in cost of construction and um, or quite honestly, just didn't do very good underwriting in their acquisitions or development. There's gonna be a lot of projects that are gonna get uh, stressed with um, even a half to a point uh, interest rate uh, increase, as well as a, a slowdown in, in lease up. Some of these projects were just too thin and there were some folks that just um, weren't that savvy that got into the industry because it was doing so well. And, uh, and our strategy is to go out and, and selectively look at some of these projects that may be troubled and come in as either joint ventures or, or to buy them outright. So, you know, we, we see a slowing, we see that there will be some challenges in the marketplace for some folks, and um, we never look to take advantage of um, other folks, but um, we will be exploring those opportunities that are going to present themselves. And this is no different, Mike, and we've all been around, you and I have been around this uh, for a while, this will be my third recession, we know what happens. We don't know exactly the, you know, the path it's going to take this time around, but we can certainly look to cues from the past two recessions, especially in 08. And um, we've been, since 08, that's what we've been doing is um, preparing for this time. And uh, we're selling right now, um, creating that war chest and um, getting ready to now redeploy that um, when we see those troubled assets come onto the market. Yeah, very interesting commentary. You're both net seller and at the same time, mm -hmm. you're preparing for opportunistic deals that have some level of distress related mm -hmm. to probably operator uh, or, you know, or, or the fact that the construction costs have, have gone up. Mm -hmm. So um, makes sense. Uh, obviously selling um, uh, is something that generates uh, profits and, and sometimes you got to take the, the chips off the table. So it makes, mm -hmm. it makes sense to do it in a good market before uh, challenges hit. So, but at the same time, you're still projecting pretty good year and obviously mm -hmm. looking out multiple years Sounds like you think there will be a slowdown and things can turn into some level of recession in a few years, right? But, mm -hmm. but back to your, to your mm -hmm. uh, raising capital, you have a fund, which we, you know, we're short on time. I want to make sure you mm -hmm. have an opportunity to mention your fund and uh, you just launched. Just curious, talk a little bit about that. How would folks mm -hmm. reach out to you if they're interested to invest in storage? Mm -hmm. um, just comment a little bit about that. Sure. Yeah. So we've been um, we've been raising capital for a number of years uh, doing um, syndications. So single asset, single entity uh, syndications uh, where a number of our folks have been able to partner alongside of us in our projects. And um, we, we hesitated for a number of years, as, as you personally know, Mike, in uh, starting a fund. And uh, for, for me, that it was always um, in our team, it was always a function of um, just the risk that we weren't really willing to bite off. And we felt that, you know, you can raise a lot of capital, but if you don't, if you can't deploy it into the right project, 
And sometimes you compromise and you buy, you know, not, you know, a triple instead of a home run. And the returns aren't as great as you would like for your projections uh, with the assumption you'd make it up on the next one. And that just uh, put, for us in our own mind, I thought it would put us in a compromising position that we didn't want to be in. Now there are so many opportunities um, out there for existing facilities, value add facilities that, um, yeah, we couldn't um, get it started uh, quick enough. And so we spent the better part of a year putting together uh, our fund. It's called the, the Tricor Storage Fund One. Uh, we're raising $25 million and we're uh, identifying and buying it nothing but um, existing facilities, value add facilities. And so uh, the, the goal and the strategy of this fund is uh, not to do any ground up development or conversions. Um, we will be buying assets where we can build value. And in, and in, in some cases, that means um, buying a facility that has buildings on three or four acres. And um, we've got an additional acre or two that we can um, build up more buildings uh, and add on to those. That's been the business model from the beginning. So we have um, approximately nine uh, facilities that uh, we're, we're two months into it. We got nine facilities uh, identified. We should end up with somewhere around 18 to 20 facilities and the fund should be filled and our acquisitions um, done probably uh, about 10 to 11 months earlier than we had anticipated um, because uh, the, the market has been so great. And we've been, um, our, our, our folks are doing a, an incredible job of identifying and finding these mom and pop sellers that, that are ready to exit and um, has presented some very good opportunities for us to put into the fund. Yeah, that's good. That's a great strategy in general. I, I like this incremental value. It's, it's a lower level of risk. Mm -hmm. um, in the worst case, you 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 can tighten the belt and uh, slow mm -hmm. down distributions. But in a good case, you you could you know distribute and do the value add concurrently. Mm -hmm. uh, so Agreed. it makes total sense. How mm -hmm. would folks find you? What's the best way to? Um, uh, is there a website uh, folks should go to uh, to reach out? Yep. All things self-storage at selfstorageinvesting.com. That's our umbrella. So uh, that's where we um, give a lot of free resources for people that are interested in the asset class, whether they want to invest in it uh, actively or passively. And um, you can click through uh, multiple tabs there to find out um, how to partner with us uh, alongside in some of our projects, like in, in our fund, as well as uh, learn about the business so you can go out and uh, do it uh, actively like we do as well and uh, all types of information and resources. Uh, we've been teaching people for 15 years how to get into the business, both uh, actively and passively. And uh, uh, it, it is not in my opinion, but um, studies have shown that uh, we are the number one company for teaching people how to get into the self-storage of business. And, uh, and that is due to my incredible team that we have. So um, come check us out. A ton of resources there for all things self-storage at selfstorageinvesting.com. Thank you, Scott. And again, <laughs> my two cents, I've been to your events. I went to the uh, self-storage academy and was a self-storage mastermind. And they were uh, top niche, top, top, top notch, uh, top, top of a class, really, really great events. So it was a really good education. And thank you for providing that. So yeah, appreciate it, Mike. We'd love to have you back anytime you'd like. Yeah, one of these days I'll come out. Uh, so uh, busy schedule, just working on deals, but uh, certainly love the storage and you, you know, your events were awesome. So appreciate, uh, appreciate you. Thanks, uh, Mike. As uh, it happened in the past, all good things unfortunately come to an end. So does this podcast. Thank you, Scott, uh, very much. And uh, my pleasure. Thank you, Mike. Thank you for listening to the Big Mike Fun Podcast. To receive your copy of Mike's How to Choose a Smart Real Estate Fun Book, head to BigMikeFun.com or visit Amazon and type Mike's slot name. Keep listening and keep investing Big Mike style. See you on the next episode.